excellent for this uh, third presentation. Before, before going to the, uh, to the break, we have uh, Fahim and Marianne. They're going to talk about uh, growth incident curves and allocating a geometric brain and motion. And the supervisors were Alex, Jonathan, and uh, Colin. So please uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Isaac, for the introduction. So this is project number four. Uh, the title of our project is Growth Incidence Curve in Reallocating Geometric Brownian Motion. It was done by my team members, Fahime, Najafi, and I, and it was supervised by Alex, Jonathan, and Tom. Um, so here we would like to state the objectives of our work. The goal of this project is to study the anonymous growth incidence curve and the non-anonymous growth incidence curve predicted by the GBM and the RGBM model. The GBM and the RGBM, they are models of evolution well, and the GIC and NAGIC are used as measures of inequality over time. Uh, we would also like to compare these predictions to empirical evidence on growth incidence curve and study their properties. So before we in fact get into the numerical results that we have obtained, we would like to give some basic information about the growth incidence curve, the definition, the intuition behind, and maybe some examples of how they look like. So the distributional changes of wealth are commonly represented by the growth incidence curve, the JIC and the NAGIC. Uh, the anonymous growth incidence curve, they show the relative change in wealth in the same wealth quantile between the initial time and the final time. So here below, you can see the definition of the anonymous growth incidence curve. And in fact, it's not that difficult to understand. The intuition behind it is pretty clear. So the F inverse of P at P, that's basically the wealth of the pit quantile at time t. And as you can guess, the F inverse of P at T inverse, that will be the wealth of the pit quantile at T prime, which is the end of the period. So unlike the geometric, uh, the um, anonymous growth incidence curve, the non-anonymous growth incidence curve definition might be slightly confusing if you are looking at it for the first time. So the anonymous growth incidence curve that still shows the relative change in wealth between the time T and T prime, of the people who were at rank P at time T. So this part is important. So just to make of how the non-anonymous growth incidence curve works, we can look at this uh, illustration here. So let's assume we have a small sample size consisting of 12 individuals, and we know their wealth at time T, which is the beginning of the time. So we can sort them and we can uh, group them into three groups, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Those are the quantiles in fact. And as you can see in each quantile, these people, they are labeled. So the first quantile where the people are labeled in blue, those are the poorest people in this small uh, sample. The Q3, those are the richest poor people in this sample. So now let's look, for example, at the Q2 where people are labeled in red. So because they are ranked and they are labeled, we can follow them over time and we can um, get their wealth. The, we can identify them and get their wealth in the end of the time, which is T prime. As you can see the arrows, we can identify these people clearly. And because we know them and we know their wealth, we can get the average of this wealth and compare that with the wealth average in the beginning of the time at T. So this is how the non-anonymous growth incidence curve works. And in fact, it does the same thing with the other quantiles. So we can identify the people who are labeled in blue. We can identify the people who are labeled in green and so on. But as you can assume, no, this was not our case. We didn't have a uh, population size of 12 and we didn't have three quantiles. In fact, we have 10,000 of them and the quantiles were 100. But this one was just a small illustration of how the non-anonymous growth incidence curve works. Uh, this one is an example from a literature that is mentioned below of how the growth incidence curve, the anonymous growth incidence curve, which is the blue one and the black one, the non-anonymous growth incidence curve can look like based on real data. So this one was, uh, the data was from the United States and the time period was considered between 1980 and 1990. Uh, so now uh, let's look at some properties of the growth incidence curve and also the non-anonymous growth incidence curve. Uh, the growth incidence curve uh, in general are upward sloping when inequality is increasing. They ignore the identity of the individuals within quantile. As we have seen from the very first definition of the JIC, they basically take the wealth at the beginning of the time of the pit quantile and compare with the wealth uh, of the pit quantile in the end of the time. So, and it does the same thing with the other quantiles. So the richest people in the beginning are compared with the richest people in the final period. The poorest people are compared with the poorest in the final period. And as you can guess, these people who were, for example, in the first quantile at the beginning of the time, they are not necessarily the same people in the end of the time. 
But the jig doesn't take that into account. It just compares the walls of that quantile in the beginning of the time and the end of the time. So hence the comparison is anonymous. Well, unlike the uh, anonymous growth incidence curve, the NAGIX, it takes into account the wealth mobility and it takes into account that the um, people identity is considered. Uh, so in this case, the NAGIX becomes more sensitive and at the same time, they are more informative of the individual experience of wealth changing. And also because people are ranked, people are labeled, as we have seen in that example with color, the comparison becomes non-anonymous because we can identify the people in the end of the time. So now that we have some basic understanding of the growth incidence curve that we want to study in this project, we would like to start with this simple model, geometric Brownian motion that we looked at the beginning of our project. So the GBM is a simple model for the evolution of individual wealth. So let's assume the XIT, that's the wealth of the I person in the population at time t. So we say that the wealth follows geometric Brownian motion if it satisfies the stochastic differential equation, number one. So in this GBM model, as you can see, we have two parameters, mu and sigma. Mu is the drift term and the sigma is the volatility parameter. And just by looking at this equation one, we can say that the fractional changes in wealth um, are composed from two components. The first one is the mu dt, which is the constant deterministic part. It corresponds to the common economic growth. And the sigma dw, that's the random part, which corresponds to the individual as well. And I would also like to mention uh, that the dw, that's an infinitesimal increment of the Brownian motion or Weiner process. So this was just an um, basic information about the geometric Brownian motion model that we have studied in the beginning. So here we have the GBM trajectory from, from our model and um, everything is measured in years and the y-axis that's the wealth, right? We said that the x is the wealth. Uh, on the right hand side, we can see the same thing basically, but in log scale. And as you can see, the trajectories are expanding. So in geometric Brownian motion, uh, the wealth follows log normal distribution which means we can get the one standard deviation um, envelope of the log wealth. And that's what you see there, the um, light blue or gray shaded area. So here, before in fact uh, going into the numerics, we would like to uh, rationalize the analytical jig in GBM. Uh, again, because we know that the wealth follows log normal distribution, we know the probability density function of that we can get the cumulative distribution function. And if we invert that, we will get the quantiles. So once we have the quantiles, we can plug in that to the definition of the jig that we have seen in the beginning. And we will have this analytic explicit formula for the jig in GBM. Uh, and as you can see, if we have the mu and the sigma, and we have taken these parameters from the papers of our supervisor, it has been estimated in the real data. And if you specify the time, the beginning of the time and the end of the time, this will become a function of p and we can plot that. And uh, also I would like to say that a phi inverse of p, that's uh, the standard inverse quantile. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, quantile of the standard normal. Uh, so, and once we plot, we will have this graph uh, of the analytical jig in GBM. So I would like you to observe that the jig is increasing. So let's keep this in our mind. And now let's look at the numerical results that we have obtained in the GBM. So here we would like to present the anonymous growth incidence curve and the non-anonymous growth incidence curve between two points in time. So first of all, let's look at the blue line and the orange line. The blue one is still the analytical jig that we have just obtained in the previous slide. And the orange one is the jig in GBM that we have gotten from the simulation that we have done. So as you can see, the analytical jig and the numerical jig, they pretty closely coincide, which means the theoretical and the empirical results are in line with each other. And in fact, they are, um, we have assumed that everyone starts with the same wealth, with 25, and then uh, the wealth grows over time. The population size from 10,000, and we have used the specified parameters mu and sigma. Uh, in fact, there are a couple of things we can observe from this uh, jig in GBM. Um, for example, if we look at the quantile 19 and 100, those are the richest people in the population, the richest 10%, we can see that the curve there is pretty steep. And we can say that the rich people are getting richer with higher speed, and we can do similar analysis for the other quantiles. 
Well, unlike the DIC in DBM, the NADIC in GBM, as you can see, it does this crazy fluctuation. And that's simply because the NADIC is more sensitive. And also it's subject to the population size and also the contrast that we have picked. So if we play with the number of the population size and if we play with the number of quantiles, over the long period of time, we would expect the magic to be largely flat. And as you can see here, we have six hundred uh, quantiles, which means we have percentiles. And again, the y-axis, that's the relative change as well. And also, I would like to say that here, it doesn't really matter what two points in time we pick. Qualitatively, we will have the same uh, jig. So the shape will be the same. Um, so here again, because we have mentioned that in GBM, the world follows log normal distribution, uh, which means we can get the moment. So we have this expected mean and the variance. Uh, here we wanted to um, plot the simulated mean and the simulated variance against the theoretical mean and the theoretical variance. And this way, again, one more time, it confirms that the theoretical results and the empirical results we have, uh, they are in line and they coincide. And again, we have used the same parameters. Um, that we have been using from the beginning of the time, taken from the papers of our supervisor. So the second part will be introduced by Fahime. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Okay, uh, now that we have a good understanding of the geometric Brownian motion, maybe we can do some modification to, the, uh, to this model to make it more realistic, probably. So this can be done, for example, for adding some kind of interaction between uh, the individuals in our population. And, and again, uh, this can be done with the reallocation mechanism. Um, based on the reallocation mechanism, we, uh, we have uh, each individual paying a fixed proportion of its wealth into a central pot. Basically, they contribute to society. And then uh, each individual gets an equal amount of that um, um, central pot, uh, and it will be added to their wealth. So now let's look at it mathematically. We have uh, the same equation that we had for geometric Brownian motion with the same drift term and uh, sigma and uh, the Brownian motion um, terms. But also we have two other new terms. The first term, which is minus tau uh, x times dt, shows the uh, contribution to, of each person, which is proportional to its uh, wealth. And tau is actually the reallocation rate, which shows the magnitude of uh, reallocation mechanism. And we also have the second term, which is tau times the average of the uh, population's wealth uh, times dt. And this term shows how each individual takes an equal share of that central pot um, from the reallocation. Uh, now we can uh, think about what those terms mean. Um, for the case where tau is positive, uh, the first term is negative and the second term would be positive. Um, but if the um, wealth of an individual is uh, larger than the average wealth of the population, uh, basically they would in total give money to the society. But um, inversely, if uh, someone has uh, less than the average of wealth, uh, in total, this term would be larger and they would gain money from this mechanism. But for the case where tau is negative, everything uh, basically the signs would be the other way around. And uh, that would mean that we are getting money from the rich and uh, from the poor and giving to the rich. Again, as we had for GBM, we can plot the trajectories for a sample, a population sample. And um, the parameters uh, that are used here are similar, and you also have this new parameter tau, which is um, positive in this case. You can see that, like visually, uh, these trajectories are quite different from the GBM case. Uh, so we don't have that um, expanding envelope of the wealth um, during time. Now we want to introduce. Um, another measure of wealth, which is basically the wealth divided by the average wealth of the population. This is the rescaled wealth. This rescaled wealth actually removes the um, effect of uh, the um, you know, general uh, increase in the uh, total, total wealth of the population. And as you can see in the uh, trajectories graph, uh, we don't see that 
uh, uh, upward trend, and that has been eliminated here. And uh, considering that uh, we have a large number of and like the population population is large, and um, considering the real scale, well, the equation for the model would be equation four that you can see here. Okay, now for the positive tau case and large n approximation that we have talked about, uh, a stationary focal plank equation can be solved. And uh, by doing that, we can find a stationary distribution. So that means that uh, the distribution of wealth for in this model would get to a stationary point, which um, the PDF would be inverse gamma distribution with the Pareto tape. Um, here in this distribution, as I mentioned, y is rescheduled, and we have zeta, which is 